New Haven, Connecticut is home to some of the best pizza you can find anywhere in the world. The significant history behind this pizza and the people who founded it shows strong leadership and lasting legacies. For a limited time at Pizza Hut, get the triple cheese covered stuffed crust pizza. Order a large for just 11. Some Papa John pizza. <laughs> Papa's got something for every taste. The meats, loaded with five real meats, or our Tuscan six cheese. From Little Caesars, two pizzas for $8.98, plus a free eight-piece order of crazy bread and a free 32-ounce Coke Classic. Enough food to make a family meal into a party party. In America today, pizza is a part of daily life. We often take it for granted and overlook the roots of one of America's favorite foods. Conveniently, one of America's greatest pizza towns is right in our backyard the town of New Haven. There, Pepe's Pizza, Modern A Pizza, and Sally's A Pizza are all critically acclaimed restaurants. Even more noteworthy, each restaurant started as an Italian immigrant's dream, a way to become financially and socially successful in a new and unfamiliar world. Their story is one of hard work and dedication, an unwavering work ethic, and unfortunately, it is a story often not told. Um, there was a big depression in southern Italy in the late 1800s after the reunification of the country and they came here for jobs. So um, let's say people came here not to bake, they came here to work. Um, they needed money, they'd send it back home. And um, when they got here they realized the work was really tough. It was really tough work in the factories. Um, we had a lot of these factories in New Haven. And uh, they also ended up staying. So, you know, we had about 80,000 Italians come here from southern Italy uh, between 1880 and 1960. Uh, and they brought with them all their traditions. So, um, bakers, uh, bankers, um, you know, pastry makers, pasta makers, you name it, all the food stuff came with them. While the vast majority of the Italian immigrant population in New Haven were still grinding it out in factories, a handful of daring individuals decided that they'd had enough. The most significant of these initial entrepreneurs opened up pizzerias called Pepe's Pizzeria, Sally's a Pizza, and Modern a Pizza. Their financial success led many other Italian immigrants to bring a piece of their culture to the new world in which they lived. My grandfather came over from Italy to the United States in the early 1920s. He then opened up, he was a bread man, and then he uh, flattened his dough out and put a little tomato on from Maizano's on um, Grand Avenue in New Haven. They were all friends, all bombards. So they all uh, sat around, they made the pie, grandfather started from there. As Stephanie mentioned, Frank Pepe bought his ingredients from other local Italian businesses such as Maizano's. One of the examples showing the leadership of the pizzerias, not just Pepe's, was how they supported their friends and local businesses. They did not close off their doors to the rest of the community, instead, they continued to play a leadership role for many years to come. So the leaders we're talking about are the bakers. Um, pizza, as pizza, you know, was evolved over many uh, hundreds and maybe even thousands of years. Um, it's basically a baker's uh, tradition. So the baker would be the one responsible for um, making the bread, you know, preparing it, um, and choosing the toppings, and and, and deciding that it's going to be something that you, they feed people. So the leaders in this case um, were the bakers. Um, they were also the the say in a lot of cases the wives of of men working in the fields in Italy. Um, and in the baker's case, um, if you go back to history of how pizza was made and who made it, in, um, you know, if we talk about when it, when modern, we're going to talk about the modern style of pizza, which is uh, we call Neapolitan thin crust pizza. It came out of um, the area of Campania in Italy. And so that um, goes back to both the farming community, um, and I, like I said, it was a lot of the, the bakers who would be having these big ovens and they'd be making uh, pizza at the end of the day using leftover dough and leftover vegetables and meats and things like that. So it was like a peasant food. Even before bakers came to America from Italy, they played a big leadership role in their communities. When they did come to America, they simply continued playing the part in their community that they had always played in the past. However, the bakers were not the only leaders. As Colin mentioned earlier, the women and the families also played a more than significant role in leading both the pizzerias and the communities. You mentioned Frank Pepe. He ended up uh, fighting in the war in World War One. 
and he came back to New Haven 10 years later in 1919. And uh, it's at that time that um, he went into the baking business and he worked for somebody else. So he wasn't his own business yet. Um, and it was, they say it was because of his wife that she said, why don't you do this on your own? You don't need to work for this other guy. You can make more money if you do it on your own. And Pe Frank Pepe could not read. He couldn't speak English. He couldn't write. So it was his wife who could do that stuff, and she was the one who helped him with the business. You know, who was the leader? Was it Frank Pepe or was it his wife? It's a good, good question. Um, Sally Consiglio, um, Salvatore, he was Frank Pepe's nephew. And he worked for Frank Pepe um, at his original spot, which opened in 1925. Um, it's now called The Spot. And he, he actually had an opportunity. It was actually his mother, again, going back to the women behind the men that we all hear about, there's actually always a woman behind it. She found an opportunity. There was a pizza place down the street that closed, and it was, and she took it over, and she bought the business for about 500 bucks. And at the same time, Sally and his brother Tony were working for Frank Pappy, so they all kind of migrated over to the new place. And uh, Sally liked to make pie his own way, so he made it a little bit different. And they named it after Sally because he was 18 years old. And so, you know, Philomena didn't want to have the business herself. She was older. It would be his business. And so it was named after him. In addition to having played a big leadership role in their community, Pepe's, Sally's, and Modern have also created very strong legacies. The strength of these legacies is clearly shown through the impact that they have had on America's pizza community, as well as the amount of people who have imitated their renowned New Haven style. And my cousin Sally, he worked for my grandfather. So is there a little bit of a competition? No, because my grandfather, you know, I have to tell you something. We love each other, even though, you know, it's like one family, one restaurant. But my grandfather always said there's enough to go in with you. He was never jealous. He was a humble man. He was a great man. He was a dedicated man to his family and to his customers. And it, 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 it went on. It, like, was passed on from, to, from my mother and my aunt to us. And now to the people in the corporation. Pepe's personality and his passion for his work and customers created a legacy that transcended generations. Now the people who work at his pizzeria strive to be like he was. A perfect example of the legacy that Pepe's, Sally's, and Modern left is the pizzeria in New Haven called Bar. There, they have imitated the historic pizzerias by producing the same style pizza that so many people love. Even down to the interior design of the restaurant and the atmosphere it creates, Bar clearly shows how it was influenced. It is one of the best pizzerias to have opened in New Haven around 60 years after the influential pizzerias opened. Aside from the pizzeria aspect of bar, it also serves as what its name implies, a bar and even a nightclub. The goal is to attract the younger generations and they have been very successful at it. Having been influenced by the greats and giving it their own unique twist, bar pizzeria is sure to have a legacy of its own one day. I think the real legacy is that the best survive. And the ones that weren't in the way of the wrecking ball, that's another thing too, is a lot of New Haven neighborhoods got demolished in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And some of the ones that, you know, Worcester Street did not get demolished, largely. Some of it did, actually. So Pepe's was not in the way and Sally's was not in the way. Um, but Camposano's was in the way. That, that first pizzeria, they, they had to move um, to a different neighborhood during redevelopment. So that was probably not beneficial for them. And uh, the legacy is that they, it's kind of like a Darwinian thing. They survive because they're the best and they were able to, you know, make make it through all the different changes. So uh, I think that's that could explain it. As you can see, New Haven's pizza has a long and illustrious history. What can also be seen is how certain leaders were able to create a legacy that still remains, thrives, and evolves today.